I'm glad that you're here today. We're grateful that you've come. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my brothers who have led our worship up to this point. Mm -hmm. And I want to take you now to Colossians, the third chapter. Right. Right. This is a chapter of scripture that I believe will serve to bless us in a very mighty way. My last time I addressed you, I talked to you about what's happening in our relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And I talked to you about what that means to our relationship with one another. Yeah. And I'm going to strive down that same path for the next few minutes. Okay. From this text, I want to present another lesson. This time before I spoke to you, I talked to you about why did I get married? Yeah. 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 Today, I'm going to follow that up with married with children. <laughs> married with children. Yes, sir. Now, if you're here in this audience and say, I'm not married, I don't have any children, I can go to sleep. Wrong. <laughs> because this is coming in a direction that you're probably not thinking. Right. And you heard the text of scripture and said, oh, I know where he's going. I guarantee you, you don't. Uh, come on now. When we look at this text of scripture, it's very important that we realize it's not on an island by itself. Amen. It is sown in a fabric yeah. of human responsibility. Right. It is weaved together with human to divine responsibility. Right. It is woven in a concept of divine to human expectation yeah. in terms of how we deal with one another. So we're not simply isolating the part you heard. We're going to deal with the rest. Somebody says, give me the bottom line. I got to give you the top line. <laughs> then you'll understand the bottom line. That's right. That's right. The title of this message is focused on the spiritual reality. All right. yeah. Of God being our Father, yeah. uh -huh. our union with Christ, yeah. and our being indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, I'm particularly focused on God's calling to you and to me, yeah. and the implications for day-to-day -day living. All right, all right. The gospel is the power of God Amen. to salvation. Yeah. Yet believers of the gospel aren't immediately called in the heaven. All right. Oh no, we got to live down here for a little bit. Right. And as we live down here, we are called to live out heaven's standards yeah. right down here in this dirty world. God in his wisdom has prescribed a path of life. Mm -hmm. This is true life yeah. because it is an understanding of ourselves. Yeah. It is an understanding and a growing appreciation for other people. Yeah. And it is an understanding and a direction for how we live in community. All right, all right, all right. You see, though I'm going to address household relationships, yeah. I'm really addressing the deeper reality. Right. I'm really speaking about our relationship with God. Yep. Well, let's look at the first part of chapter three. Let me give you the top line. Listen to what the writer says. Paul writes, if then, if then you were raised with Christ. That's enough to chew on right there. Well, I want you to know that God calls us to a new mindset. If you've been in the waters of baptism, God has called you and me to a new mindset. Now, the backdrop of Paul's letter is dealing with people who are simply saying, uh, well, you need more than Jesus to know how to live. They were saying you need more than Jesus to become united with God. They were saying you need more than the teachings of Jesus to know how to really live. They were saying you need more than the way of Jesus in order to have true wisdom. That's the kind of things they were saying. You know, a lot of us fall in that same category. We read the scriptures, but then we read Ebony. We read the scriptures... And then we read Cosmopolitan. Yeah. We read the scriptures and then we listen to the folks at the barbershop. Yeah. 
and the beauty salon. We read the scriptures, then we dial up uh, Dr. Phil uh, and some of these other characters. And we expect them to have enough wisdom to direct us to have a real great life in this world. And we mess it up every time. You see, you can never start from a bottom-up approach to the kind of life Jesus tells us. Jesus said, I've come to give them life and life more abundantly. You cannot start from the bottom in a finite mind to try to understand the wisdom of the infinite unless the infinite reveals information to the finite mind so the finite mind cannot try to figure it out but to listen and obey. God doesn't tell you to figure it all out. God says, I figured it out. I put it in the word. You don't need to try to figure out how to do it. I just obey. Well, let's go a little further. If then you've been risen with Christ, I want you to notice how the writer put it. He's putting a challenge to us. He's saying that you talk about you. You've been here praising me. You talk about how you're living for me. You talk about how you believe in me. If that is true. He says, I want you to do something. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Then he says, set your mind on things that are above, not on the stuff down here. Let's unpack that. You see, Jesus has saved us. But the Father has called us. And he has called us to a new mindset. It's a mindset that recognizes radical change to oneself who has been risen with Christ. I want you to notice that as the writer put this down, he said, if you've been risen with Christ, he is saying something has happened to you. That's in passive voice there. (laughs) Something's happened to you. Somebody worked on you. Now, if you have been risen with Christ, since something has happened to you, if it did, it means you have to have a deliberate reorientation of how you think. All right, all right. Yeah. What's wrong with a lot of us? We still have our mind oriented toward this world. Yeah. We have to have our mind reoriented. Yes, yeah. It has to undergo a change. Yeah. Brown, you got any scripture for that? I think I got a little bit. Yeah. Well, the Bible says, don't be conformed. Yeah. Romans 12 and 1, verse 2 as well. Don't be conformed to this world. Yeah. Get your mind out of Dr. Phil. Come yeah. on. Phil Phil didn't come from heaven. No. (laughs) Phil got his own problems. Get your mind out of the contemporary contemporary magazine. How to treat your man. Get your mind out of the barbershop. Man, you ought to tell that woman. Get your mind out of that. Have your mind reoriented. Uh Set your mind. This is present tense, active voice. Something has happened to you. Now you therefore in response set your mind. Yes. Now you know how to say, you know how to change the channel, don't you? Yes. Uh, Something come on TV, we don't want to see it. Yes. Yes. We click. Come on now. We change it. Yes. We know how to make a decision to make a change. Yes. Set your mind is the same concept. Instead of following the wisdom of the world for how to live with other people, turn that channel off and focus on that which is above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. This is what we are to do based on what has been done. Go on to verse three. I'm still in Colossians three. I didn't get out of it yet. Verse number three, he says now, because you have died. You have died and you, 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 for you died and your life, watch this, is hidden. That means wrapped. Wrapped around. You know, they used to wrap a mummy around. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus gets wrapped all around us. Your life has been hidden, the scripture says, in Christ. What is the idea? Our mind uh, has to be reoriented toward Christ. Why? Because what has happened to us. If you've been risen with Christ, you need to understand. And I need to remember that baptism isn't just something you do. Some folks, that's just something they do. It's more, it's deeper than that. It is something you do to represent what has been done. Uh We baptize, our sins are washed away. And not only that, we have been given a new calling. A higher calling. All of this is what's in Paul's mind. By the time he gets to verse 18, he's he's working on the things he's already said. Why are you doing it this way, Paul? When you start talking to wives and husbands and children and parents, well, I don't just start there. I want to give them the reason for the instruction. Well, Paul is talking about God's household. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible tells us that God has a household. Yes, sir. And the message is married with children. Yes, sir. We're married to Christ. Yes. And that makes us children yes. of God. Yes. Now, God has a household. Yes, sir. In Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 19 and 21 or through 21. Listen. Now, therefore. You are no longer strangers and foreigners. Thank God. He goes on to say, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Don't you know God has a household? His household is what the scriptures talk about. Yeah. When we talk about a household, you need to understand in, that, in, in the Greco-Roman world, they had a term they used called oikos. Mm-hmm. And oikos is translated into English as household. All right. Now remember, in the Greco-Roman world, the oikos, the household, was the cornerstone of society. Uh-huh. In fact, you can get the concept from how the Greco-Roman went, and basically they said, so goes the household. Uh-huh. So goes the nation. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, if you've been paying attention... This country is telling us the same thing. So goes the household. So goes the nation. You see this nation going crazy. What a home is going crazy. What's wrong with our children? What's happening in the home? What's wrong with men? What's happening in the home? What's wrong with women? What's happening in the home? What's wrong with the church? What's happening? Yes, sir. In the home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So goes the household. Yes, so goes the nation. Yes. Now the household in the Greco-Roman world, listen, consisted of members of the immediate family and typically extended into include slaves. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, Freedmen, yes. servants and laborers, and sometimes even business associates and tenants. You see, the Greco-Roman household was a little different than ours. You know how we do. We get up in the morning. Some of us mad about having to get up tomorrow morning (laughs) because the government not shut down. So we had to go. (laughs) So we had that problem, right? We go to work. And we're among the people we have to work with. All right. And then we thank God we get like Fred Flintstone when that bell ring. Oh, yeah. We, we yabba dabba do. <laughs> some, some of you young folk don't know what I'm talking about. And, and, and you get on out and you lead those folk at work. That's right. yeah. But you see in the Greco-Roman household, all right. these folk around you all the time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You didn't lead a boss at work. Yeah. You live with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You go to the supermarket and you deal with certain people. Well, some of those same folks may be in your household. What I'm trying to get you to see is this instruction is given in the backdrop of a community that included more than mom and dad and the children. It was all social relationships. That was the household. Well, what's the wisdom? What am I driving out here? God's household. All right includes everybody in Christ Jesus. Now now watch this. The more people you deal with, 
The harder it is to get along. Am am I I I saying something right here? The more folk you have to deal with, the more difficult it becomes. Why? Because we bring all of our stuff. And we tell you, they put all that stuff together and, and it gets to be a problem. And especially when you consider the fact that we live in a fallen world. Brown, without church members, still fallen. Have our issues. So in the household, you got all of that going on, and we need some instruction for how to get along in the household. God gave instruction for his household. Now listen. The Lord of the household had all authority over the household. All authority. Well, God taught us, teaches us that in the household, he is a full authority. But then there's some benefits that go along with that. The household gave one a sense of identity. Uh I know who I am because I'm a part of the household. Uh You know what's wrong with some of our children today? Uh, broadly speaking, they don't know who they are. All right, all right. They don't have a connection, a sense of identity. Yes, so they get swept up in some sort of organization where they're given an identity, but it's twisted. Yeah. Uh, teach, uh, oh, my. Oh, my. He initiates you. You go out and shoot this person. Uh-huh. Take out that person. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then you're one of us. Mm-hmm. We're going to put a marking on you, yeah. and you one of us. Yeah. All right. God has put a marking on us. The marking is the Holy Spirit in God's household. The household gave one a sense of security. Oh, I'm secure in God's household. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because no matter what, I know God got me. Yes, sir. The household gave one a sense of responsibility. You see, you can't be a part of the household and not do anything. Yeah. Uh, come on you can't be a part of the household and not be accountable. Well, well. Michael. You got too many church members don't want to be accountable to anybody. Oh, come on now. Come on now. What do you mean calling me? <laughs> I was doing what is my business. Uh, well, you're part of the household. Come on, yeah. now, preach. You're part of the household. Yes. When's the last time, to use a different example in scripture, when's the last time your lungs got mad at your mind because your mind said, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm doing my own thing. It's my business. Oh no, you're part of this body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're together. Yes, sir. Well, God through the Apostle Paul used commonly known earthly units to convey a spiritual reality. Yeah. So we're gonna find out about how our household should be functioning. Shining based on how God functions in his household. Amen. Amen. Now let me share with you some things God has in his household. All right. God has some beautiful things in his household. God's household consists, first of all, of order. Oh, uh, okay. It is the order that God has already demonstrated yeah. in the Godhead. All right. What do you mean about the Godhead? I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. God's household is based on the same concepts of the Godhead itself. And in the Godhead, there is order. Listen to Jesus. Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Uh Listen now. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's an indication of order. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean by order? How things are set. Yeah. The Godhead has order. Yeah. The Godhead created this world. Uh-huh. The Father sent the Son to save the world. Uh-huh. How can the Father send the Son? Order. Uh, are you following me here? The Son prayed the Father to send the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. Can the Holy Spirit be sent? Order. Order. Listen. Okay. We need the love of the Father, the salvation of the Son, and the sanctification of the Spirit to get the glory. Yeah. There's order yes, sir. in the Godhead. 
God's household, uh, God's kingdom has organization. Well, let me get some scripture here. Brother Pointer used to say it this way. Let me get some script for my lip. (laughs) First Timothy chapter three. I want you to listen now. I'm talking about uh, the the Godhead. I'm talking about God's household. How is it structured? It first of all consists of order. Listen, Paul writes, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Now, when Paul wrote that, he wrote that on the heels of talking about elders and deacons. All right, all right. Think it out. The very fact that we use the term kingdom implies order and implies hierarchy. Oh, wow. We need to stop thinking. Listen, we, not, we need to stop thinking of the church. Yes. Listen, uh, in the same sense of an American democracy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Too many folks have been given that mindset about the church. Uh-huh. Well, we all come together and vote. You don't get to vote Come on, man. on what God says. Oh, say that, say that. You don't get to vote. No, sir. Oh, and God never asked me no. That's right. to vote no, sir. on what should be taught. Right. Yeah, yeah. He said, just teach it. Yes, sir. Come on. What happens in the church, we bring the college to the church. Right. Come on. I'm going to get in trouble here, but I don't care. Come on, man. We bring the sorority and the fraternity yeah. into the kingdom yeah. and try to operate the way we did work, on the campus. Uh-huh. Won't work. God doesn't give us that. No, he doesn't. God did not have his household run as an American democracy. Amen. God's kingdom is a theocracy. Yeah. Jesus speaks That's it. and we step in order. Yeah. Right. That's that's the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't ask us to vote. Well, how should we? What should we teach? Uh, uh, let's vote on how we ought to worship. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> the Lord has laid it down. It's a theocracy. That's right. It's a theocracy. Right. Well, Brown, why you think you're so big and bad? Well, first of all, I don't. Come on, come on. I know some folk think that. Come on now. Well, uh, uh, what about the church leaders? Uh, uh, why do they think they're so big and they ought not to? That's right. You know what an evangelist is? You know what an elder is, a deacon, whatever you want to look at in scripture? Nothing more than servants. That's right. That's right. Servants that are working for the king. Yeah. Amen. Well, Brown, you said uh, uh, Jesus is, is king. Uh, why did uh, the church leadership make decisions? Because the king told us to. Yeah, boy. Oh, preach, God. The king said, do it. Brown, right. I, I think you, I think you, you and PD, you, you, you think too much of yourselves. And what we think is we got to come to judgment. Yeah. Oh, and when it comes to judgment, the Lord going to ask, did you do did you did you lead? Did you direct the way you're supposed to? Now he'll know the answer. All right, all right. We're under judgment. Yeah. So if you think, well, Brown, you 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 try to be too forceful. I know I have to answer. Yeah. Who what's going to take place? Yeah, yeah. Well, now, have you ever? If you want to understand that concept, I just tried to share. Uh, maybe some of you have been the elder sibling. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if I weren't the older, you maybe you had the older one. Yeah. Uh-huh. And mom or dad or both say, I'm going to go so and so. You yeah. are in charge all right, all right. of the rest. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, my oldest sister, I guess she's standing about five feet, I don't know, something like that. Uh-huh. And uh, she is uh, seven years older than me. Right, right. Uh, a little bit, little, I think uh, maybe seven and a half. Uh, Sylvia, if you're listening, you correct me later. <laughs> but uh, my mother would leave her in charge mm-hmm. most of the time. Okay. 
In fact, all the time I remember. Uh And she would just leave her in charge and the four of us would have to listen to what she, now she's short. But guess who never messed with her? I wasn't going to fool with her. (laughs) She proved that point to me one time. (laughs) I got to be taller than her. Broad, I'm 14, talking, right? She was driving me in her car one time, and I'm in the back seat just cutting. I'm in the front seat cutting up. (laughs) She said, I had enough. Uh And I said, oh, (laughs) I had enough. And I said something else smart. (laughs) She stopped the car. She looked at me and said, get out. (laughs) Now, we were a long way away from the house. (laughs) She said, get out. I said, get out. I slowly opened the door, got out and watched the car pull away and look real sad. (laughs) She was in charge and I was cutting the fool. I say all that to say this. Those rules had come from our parents to her. All she was doing was reinforcing. If you can understand that, then you know what church leadership is about. The king said, or to use the family analogy, the father said, take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Does that make uh, the people taking care own the sheep? Absolutely not. It simply means I got to answer to the father for what he told me to do. Well, so much for that. Let me move on. Now, the unique thing about the kingdom, I want you to listen carefully because I'm about to make a turn here. The unique thing about the kingdom of God is that at its core is order Yes. Hierarchy mm-hmm. and equality. All right. Mm-hmm. See, God's household consists of equality, too. Yeah, yeah. It consists of order, but it also consists of equality. The father is not the son. Right. right. But the son is equal to the father. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. And Jesus said that in Philippians, the second chapter, Paul, he said it through Paul. And Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, yeah. who though being in the form of God, yeah. thought it not a robbery yeah. to be equal yeah. with God. Jesus equal with the father. Yes, sir. Yeah. The father is not the son, but the son is equal to the father. All right. Uh, teach. The Holy Spirit is not the Father, but the Holy Spirit, too, is God. Yeah. Come on. Acts chapter 5, they were taking up an offering, yes, sir. so to speak. <laughs> People were contributing, Acts chapter 5, Acts, and, and, and Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, yeah. They showed up, right? Yes, sir. Now, they had planned at home to lie about the money. Yeah. See, a whole lot of folks mess up at home when it comes to money. Yeah. And they get here, and then they act like, uh, you know, wasn't premeditated. <laughs> Uh, He lied about, uh, did you give so-and-so? Yeah, we gave so But they lied. They kept back some of the money that they said they were going to give. And when God's spirit was mentioned, Peter said, why did you you decide to lie about this money? You haven't lied to to men. You lied to God. He was connecting the Holy Spirit with God. So the Holy Spirit is an equal part of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, there is order, there is hierarchy. The Son is not over the Father. The Spirit is not over the Father. There is order and hierarchy, but there's equality. Well, if you can get that, you understand where I'm about to go. There is equality. God's household consists of diversity. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by diversity? As I said already, the three of the Godhead are unique and distinct. Uh Yet they are one. If we can ever grasp this in the church, we'll go a long way toward appreciating our differences while celebrating our oneness. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Pat and I aren't the same. No. Right. We're not the same. That's right. And we don't talk the same. No. We don't preach the same. Right. Now we preach the same thing. What's up? Right. We don't preach the same. We don't, don't act the same. Right. Right. We don't look the same. But we're still one. That's right. Yeah. Still one. Yeah. 
We ought to appreciate our diversity. Amen. Brother Terry and I aren't the same. That's right. But we appreciate our diversity Amen. and we appreciate our oneness. Yes, sir. Right. Just, don't you ever try to be somebody else in the church. Come on, brother. Amen. Be who you are right. as Christ works in you. Amen. Don't try to match somebody else. Right. Too many preachers try to compete. Yeah. I'm matching somebody else. Uh -huh. Let me listen to how you said. I'm going to say it with a different twang on it. But we're going to compete. You don't need to compete. Oh, preach. I listen to a lot of music. Come on now. I love the harmony. Uh -huh. I don't want all the sound to be the same. No. I listen to a lot of artists. All right, all right. I love the different type. Yes. I want to hear Teddy sometime. Yeah. But then I want to hear Marvin another time. Come on yeah. now. Then I want to hear Patty another time. Yes, sir. The late Aretha another time. I'm not trying to, uh, uh, well, they ought to be the same. No, I'm glad they're different. Amen. Amen. We ought to think that way in the church. Amen. And where I'm about to go, we ought to think that way in the home. Yeah, brother. Come on, man. That's right. Church as the household of God yeah. can experience, listen, the church as the household of God can experience hierarchy, uh -huh. equality, right? And diversity. All right, all right. Said another way, God says, I want you to act in the church like we have it in the Godhead. All right. We got order in the Godhead. Sure we do have order in the Godhead, Amen. but we equal. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's good. Amen. And we have diversity and, and we appreciate the, the father loves the son. Yeah. Son, the Holy Spirit. Diversity. Yeah. Order. But equality. Amen. Yes. You can have order and equality without racism, Good, without sexism, yes, without classism or abuse if you follow Amen. the kingdom principles. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Now let's get down to where you wanted me to get. Come on. You wanted the bottom line, had to get the top line first. Good. Now we'll start at verse 18. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes, sir. Talk about God's household. Let us talk about our households. Amen. Well, God has a concern for our households. Yes. Amen. He's got concern for our households. Amen. This is because they are to reflect the spiritual reality of his household. Yes. Yes. Paul referenced this concept when speaking about church officers. Uh-huh. In 1 Timothy 3, verses 4 and 5, Paul, in giving qualifications for church officers, said, One who rules his own house well, uh -huh. having his children in submission with all reverence, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house, what in the world are he going to do in my house? Some men may not even or should not even aspire yeah. to lead the church because they can't get things straight at home. All right, all right. I knew that wasn't going to be popular, but it's true. <laughs> Yeah, my house is running crazy. What in the world do you need to listen to me for? <laughs> See, not. Well, listen. What's happening in our society and our communal relationships, our social and communal relationships reflects on the Lord. Amen. Every one of us. What's happening, as the brother mentioned uh, earlier in the Bible class, uh, what's happening in your home reflects on yeah. what's happening on, with the Lord. Amen. Amen. You and I, as we live at home, with whomever we live at home, that has a reflection That's right. on what's happening with the Lord himself. Amen. 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 So when we look at this, listen to what Paul says. Paul has given God's instruction for our households. What does it include? Listen. I'm at verse 18. Mm -hmm. Wives, submit to your own husbands mm -hmm. as is fitting in the Lord. Stop. Amen. I'm not married. Well, I'm not just focusing on the, the home from the sense of husband and wife. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing even in the church. Yeah. Right. A lot of single women in the church. Amen. This concept of what Paul just said applies in God's household, whether we're talking about the congregation Mm -hmm. Or the individual homes. All right. Uh. PD, get ready. They're going to want you to preach the next month. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns getting in the rough stuff. All right. All right. Listen to the word. Come on, brother. Let me talk to the, to the wives and the women for just a moment. Mm -hmm. You brothers, close your ears. Enough for you. <laughs> what is Paul giving? 
He's giving instruction for how the household of God should be reflected Amen. in the individual homes. Amen. Women, wives, this is voluntary and decisive recognition of your husband, if you're married, as the head or leader in God's ordered structure for the church and for the home. Amen. Now I said a couple of key words. Voluntary is one. Amen. Voluntary. Now men, open your ears for just a moment. You cannot force a woman. All right. You cannot force a woman well, well. to submit to you unless you're foolish enough Amen. to violently lay hands on her. All right. And even then you won't have a heart. No, sir. Teach, doc. You won't have a heart. Right. No man ought to have be stupid enough yes. to lay a violent hand on a woman. Amen. Come on now. I said it. I say it again. Yes. Amen. Ought not be foolish enough right. to put a violent hand on a woman. Amen. Well, you don't like it. See me afterwards. We talk about it again. Right. That's right. That's right. This text is talking about voluntary, decisive recognition. Said in another way, this is giving way for your husband to lead you. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> well, in the household of God, he wants the men and women to give voluntary way for the church leadership to lead them. In the kingdom of God, Jesus voluntarily yielded to his father. Yes, sir. All right. God so loved the world Amen. that he gave his only begotten son. Well, the son who is equal with the father yes. had to volunteer to come. Yes, sir. Amen. You ever thought about that? All right, all right. God sent Jesus. He did. Jesus had to be willing yes, sir. to come. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He mean willing to come. Equal. Yes. Right. Yeah. But allowing, voluntarily yielding to the Father. Amen. Let's go to the garden. Come on, man. Father, if it's your will. Uh -huh. Now, I'm equal with you. That's right. Yeah. But if it's your will. That's good. Let this cup pass from me. But if it's not your will, I'm equal with you. But if it's not your will, Come on, man. bring on the cross. Yes, sir. That's good teaching, Doc. That's good. Wives, oh, that's great. submit to your husbands. The, the text says, voluntarily give way for your husband to lead you. All right. Amen. Hmm. Sometime the devil get in the church. Yes, sir. All right. He mess with our women. All right. You don't need to listen to any men. All right. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. You get the women like that, and before you know it, we got a mess going on. All right, all right. All right. In the household of God. Yes, sir. In the home, devil get to the wives. You don't need to listen. You make more money than him. All right. Yeah, well, well. Come on. All right. This, this teaching has nothing to do with how much money you make. That's right, brother. That's right. How much education you have right. doesn't have the, anything to do with how high your bank account is. Right. And it has nothing to do with superiority and inferiority. Oh, say that. Jesus is not inferior to the Father. No, Come on, man. Teach, Doc. And yet he yields to the Father. Amen. Well, wife, you're not inferior to your husband. Amen. Right. Sisters in the church, you're not inferior to those in leadership. Right. You're not inferior. That's right. But you're not superior either. Amen. It's neither. Because it's got nothing to do with that. It simply has to do with reflecting the hierarchy, the order in the Godhead. Yeah. Well, I can't leave it there. Bible teaches us some concepts here. Now let me get more practical. Yes, sir. Let me help the women. My brothers and I, you, 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 you tune out for a minute. Women, wives, this is hard. Because sometimes we get connected with someone who is quite deficient in different things. What do I do about that? Well, the command doesn't change. But here's what you can do. You can help 
meet the deficiency and lift him up to where you can be more easily submitting, allowing him to lead you. Love, lift us up where we belong. Y'all heard that before, right? Some men ought to be singing this song. You are the wind beneath yeah. my wings. Amen. Amen. Brothers, I, I, I should have told you you could listen to that. I mean. <laughs> your wife can be the wind beneath your wings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me get more practical. You, you don't know how to handle money? All right. But she's good at it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what you ought to do? Come on. Uh, honey, I'm, I'm leading. And I know that your skill here is a whole lot better than mine. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Please handle this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Help me to understand it better. All right. Mm -hmm. You know what you can say, wife? I'll be glad to do that. Because mm -hmm. it's going to help with this whole idea of how we can function in peace yes, sir. Yes, sir. in the home. That's good. Mm -hmm. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let me get to the men. I, got, I can't stop without getting to the men. Mm -hmm. Listen. The Bible says next, husbands, love your wives. Now, that's enough right there. I'll get to the second part. Let me get the first one. All right. Husbands. Now, we read this last time I was preaching to you. Husbands, love your wives. I told you before. And when you look in Colossians and in Ephesians, neither one of those tell the wives to love the husband. All right, all right. I'm not saying the Bible doesn't say that. It says that someplace else. But I'm talking about those two texts. Yes, sir. The Bible tells the wife to respect her husband and to allow her him to lead her. Right. That's what scriptures say. Right. Scripture didn't say in those two texts, love. You know why? Because God puts the onus of love on the husband. Right. Mm. On the man. Oh, on, on. Good, Mike. Well, I, no problem, Brown. Shoot, man, I'll burn some candles, get some oil out, massage. No, we're not talking about that kind of love. <laughs> we're not talking about that kind of love. Oh. Believe it or not, this word is agape. Amen. Agape. Amen. You know what that means, brothers? That means even when we don't feel like <laughs> Come on, God. doing what's best for them, uh -huh. we still have to do it. Yes, yeah. uh, Come on, bro. It's agape, yeah. right? Yeah. Even when they have gotten to a point where somehow they crossed us. Mm. All right. Preach. Show agape. Yeah. Right. Now, agape is not just, it's not feeling. Uh, it's will. Yes, sir. Will. I have to do it. Yeah. Well, let me, a little bit further here. Oh, Got to do it. Even when we don't feel like it, and it is continuous. Yeah. Keep yeah. on loving yeah. your spouse. Yes, sir. Keep on loving your spouse. You and I don't get a chance to pick and choose. Right. I'll show a copy to you on our anniversary. No. Man, you better be getting up in there every day. Come on, brother. Showing a copy. Yeah. Come home tired. She's tired too. Yeah. Uh, say that. Show agape. Yeah. Do what needs to be done to help her because you are showing and not just talking yeah. about your commitment to the relationship. Yeah. Right. That's good. Oh, that's, that's, that's Husbands, good. love your wives. Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. Look at what Paul wrote here. It's important, man. Listen. And do not be bitter All right. toward them. All right. Come on. Hmm. Bitterness. This idea of being loving, having agape for the wife, is to be done without being resentful. Amen. Or sour. All right. All right. All right. You ever had to do something you didn't want to do? Yes, sir. If you be careful, if you're not careful, you learn to resent the person who told you to do it. All right. All right. Come on, come on. You cannot allow past angering times to prevent expressions of agape. All right. 
Right, See, a lot of us, we still sawing sawdust. <laughs> we sawing sawdust. Say that now. Something happened some time ago. Yeah. And we, we, we said we forgave it, but it's... Yeah. It's in the head, right? Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is uh, the spouse does something, mm-hmm. largely without even thinking twice about it. Yeah, yeah. And we, in our mind, uh huh, I know why you did that. Yeah. Well, well. You, de- you know good and well I can't stand you doing that. <laughs> and you're doing that just to grate my nerves. That's what's going on up here. Come on. And then the, then the devil gets into it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She sure is trying to get you, man. You need to set her in her place. Remember Sally, she wasn't treating you that way. Ah, yeah, man. You know, you need to jump on that, man. You need to straighten that up. You need to get your respect. And we listen to that foolishness. And then we're bitter and ugly acting. When the text says, this ain't Dr. Phil. No, it's not a barbershop talk. God says, love her, do for her what's best for her, and don't be bitter thinking about, I'm tired of doing this for you. Yeah. Amen. Let the past go. Amen. Stop sawing, resawing sawdust. Yes, sir. That's good. Now, the previous virtues that are up in, up in the top line, I didn't touch him. I'm going to very quickly touch him. The previous virtues that are in this text, read them when you get home, use words like this. Forgiving, yeah. All right. compassion, right. kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Yeah. That's good. You want to do God honor in your home? Well, that's good. Try a little kindness. Mm-hmm. Well, well. Try a little compassion, yes, humility, meekness, and patience. These are the things that are needed as we deal with one another in the home. Amen. Now, I'm trying to wrap up the pad, I'm trying to pull a parachute, but I'm having a hard time finding where. <laughs> Let's see, what can I what can I say to you quickly? All right. What can I say to you quickly? All right, so now now listen. I'm not gonna finish, but I but I want to get this part out. Listen, church. This is uh Practical teaching here. How can we get along better as husbands and wives in the home? How can we get along better as members of the body of Christ, men and women? How do, how do we get along better? Listen, you and I have to recognize the challenge of this teaching and become more sensitive to what makes it challenging to either our spouse Mm-hmm. or somebody in the congregation who's not our spouse. All right. All right, all right. You and I often ask the question when we get frustrated with one another. Uh-huh. We ask the question, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Please, Amen. I'm going to suggest you change the question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Don't ask what's wrong with you. Please, man. Yeah. Ask this question. What happened to you? What happened to you? Now, you don't have to ask it out loud, but if you listen long enough while you're living uh, in the home from day to day, if you listen enough as you deal with your brothers and sisters in the church from from time to time, you you, you pick up things. And you learn what happened Mm -hmm. to someone. Mm -hmm. Can I get more practical? You might be a husband who wonders why your wife draws back from you Come on. when you are trying to reach out to be affectionate. Well, 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 well. This is an example. Yes, sir. You might want to wonder and find out what happened to her mm. before you got there. All right. Come on, Doc. It could be that she had had an abusive situation with a male. Yeah. All, right, all, right. all right, all right. And when you reach, it triggers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. And therefore, you have to be more sensitive yes, sir. and learn how not to trigger. All right. Yeah. That's good. Until she can get more comfortable. That's right. Amen. Oh. That's all right. Don't you understand it? Yeah, yes, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some women 
who have dealt with some really raggedy guys. Yeah. Can I get amen? Yeah. Some really raggedy dudes. Yes, sir. Let's face it, men, some of us have been raggedy. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Some of us have been raggedy. Some of us were only focusing on what we could get out of a woman. That's all we wanted. Come on, brother. I get this out of you when I'm done. I'm going to need that. <laughs> so, and because of that, here you come along. All right. And now you're interested. Mm -hmm. But she seemed to act a certain way. All right. And you do something, and she throws some stuff at you. All right. You go, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Where'd that come from? Yeah. Well, you see, she could be operating off of what had happened yes, to her. Yeah. And you got to be wise enough mm -hmm. to work around that. All right. Instead of, what's wrong with you? No, what, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that I'm not that, I'm not that way. All right. all right, all right. Flip it over and I'll be done. Come on. To get your children next week. <laughs> Some men having dealt right with women in the past. And therefore, they don't have the right mindset about women when they meet them. Mm. In the present. Come on, right. Some men come them from, an, uh, from the old black exploitation movies. Oh, preach, God. <laughs> Who's the man that thinks he's a sex machine with all the chicks? Yeah. Yeah. Shut up! They say that shaft is a bad shot on my bums up my shaft. Yeah. Raise a lot. They expect uh, women to just be uh, uh, I done with you. Next one, next one, next one. No loyalty. That's right. Stud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, that woman is equal to you. Come on, God. You, you're, not, you're not less than you. No. Right. Females are equal to males. Yes, sir. Praise God. It's, you're not, you don't treat her as a thing. No, sir. And so you have to ask yourself, women, you see a man like that, what happened to you? Well, he's, mm. his mind back with the Mac. Yes, sir. Come on now. You know? Oh, he back with he back with Willie Willie yeah, D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't mean brother Willie. I'm talking about the movie. <laughs> he, he back with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is we have to help one another yeah. Yeah. follow these teachings yeah. and love covers a multitude yeah. Yeah, that's good. of sins all right. All, right. all right I have to close right now I, know you got some more. I, I got a lot more got a lot more bullets in the chamber but I gotta stop you can't take so much I understand I understand but if you're here today and these teachings sound strange to you. They've been in God's word the whole time. Yes, sir. It's a matter of us trying to follow those teachings. Amen. And I invite you, if you've never come to Jesus, I invite you to accept not just these teachings, but all the teachings of Jesus. Amen. You might say, well, I don't know what the rest of them are. You don't need to know. Just have faith. Come on, brother. Have faith. You know, you know what repentance is? I'm going to change my mind. Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to do. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You want salvation, you have to do that. Yes, sir. You want salvation, you got to believe that Jesus is the sin son of God. Amen. You want salvation, you got to be buried in water to wash away your past sins. That's right. Maybe you got a whole lot of male, female, human relationship mess in your life. It can all be washed away. Yes, it can. That's right. And you can learn to walk with Jesus day by day Amen. after you submit to water baptism yes, and become a part of the church of the yes, Lord. Sir. Yes, sir. Are you here today? Are you here already a part of the church of the Lord? Yes. Uh, and you need prayer for something going on with your life. Right. Right. Don't hesitate to ask for it. We're not perfect here. Amen. But we'll Amen. pray both with you and for you Amen. that the Lord will lead you in the right direction. Right. Stand up with me. Lay on my bed.